Movie buffs, welcome back to the Movie Bay. This is D. In today's video, we're going to talk about... So I was doing some research for a video that I wanted to put together where I was going to talk about the top trilogies. I'm not sure what number I was going to like settle on or land on. Rather be the top 10 trilogies, top 20, whatever. I, I was just looking into it. So I come across an article on Google from Empire, Empire Magazine. And it's the 33 greatest movie trilogies. Now, it's not, it didn't say of all time, so I'm not going to say that. But it says the 33 greatest movie trilogies. And I looked at their list, and I agree with a lot of them. Now, I'm not sure about their numbers, but that's not really a big thing, what numbers. I don't agree with what certain movies, and in in the, you know, especially some of their higher picks and some of their lower picks. Basically, I just I agree with a lot of their picks, but just not the numbers, like their ranking. Um, and I got like 27 of them, 27, 28 of these overall 33 greatest trilogies. So I said, this will be a great video in itself before I put my true, my personal trilogy list together. And so we're going to talk about this, this list and I'm going to link it in the description or even pin it to the first comment. So you guys can go look at this article for yourself. So I'm going to, the ones that I don't have is not that many. I'm just going to say, I'm going to give you the name of the trilogy. Just say kind of basically NA. I don't know much. I don't know really anything about it. Um, so let's dive in and take a look at their number one pick. This is a pick that I agree with. Now, not number one for me. I love the trilogy, but I, I wouldn't put it at number one. But it's good. And it's, this is a, what I would call a consistent, damn near a perfect trilogy. All trilogies aren't really good. And what I mean by that is you'll get maybe the first two movies be really good and the third one. And most trilogies, not all, the third movie, by the time you get to the third one, it's a disappointment. And this is one where all three movies are consistently good. My favorite is the third one. And that's rare. Usually my, first, my, my favorite in a trilogy is the first one. And sometimes the second one. But let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Now, this is the one. This particular collection got the standard editions, the theatrical editions, and the extended editions. Fantastic movies. I loved all three of these movies. They are All three of them are consistently good. These are not, the extended editions do have a slightly longer runtime, but it's a runtime that really, you know, kind of pairs good with the movies. It's not a runtime that you feel like you're enduring. You're watching that extended length and you're really enjoying it. So yeah, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Empire Magazine says it's their number one pick. And you know what? I'm not going to push back and I'm not going to argue because I can see where this could be considered a greatest trilogy because it's so consistently good. So, yeah, I won't argue with that. Now, would I put it at number one? No, but it being number one on a trilogy's list, I won't argue with that. Number two, and I, a lot of these I'm not going to argue with the positions. Some of them I will, but not many. Here's one, again, this one I'm not going to argue with the position either because it's so beloved by so many movie, movie even casuals it love this trilogy. So, we have from 1977 to 1983, and Lord of the Rings was 01 to 03. So from 1977 to 1983, we have the original Star Wars trilogy. I love all six of these films. Me personally, I like the prequels better. I know that's like lunacy. That's like lunacy on the high seas to admit that you like the prequels better than the originals. But I love all six of them, to be honest with you. But I like the prequels a little bit more because I like... I like the storytelling in the prequels. Loved the storytelling in the first in the first three. Loved it. But something about the prequels that just kind of resonated with me, especially the last one being that that true origin of Darth Vader. Like you really got a good feel for where Darth, you know, because he was such a mysterious figure throughout the first three films. But again, the Star Wars trilogy, I highly agree with it being at number two. Again, I don't know where I would put it, but I, I again, I'm not going to push back on that. Now, I'm going to keep this out because the prequels are on this list. So let's go to their number three. And I definitely won't push back or argue about this being at number three. I might even, in my list, this would have made it in the, in the, in the half, in like, in that top five. Where it would have fell, I don't know. But this is my opinion. Now, Lord of the Rings, I would give that a nine out of ten ranking for as trilogies go. This one I would call a ten, for me, Pretty much a perfect trilogy. This is almost like, this is like nine, 
This is like maybe a 10. I don't know. This is to me, this is something that I would consider damn near a perfect trilogy. And this is from 1985 to 1990. This is the Back to the Future trilogy. And this is a trilogy that Robert Zemeckis said that as long as he's alive, this will never be remade. This will never be touched. This will never be molested by Hollywood. This will, this will just will be what it is. Now, again, it's been released on tons of formats. I think every format this has been released on. I have the 4K, and I'm very grateful to have it on 4K. This is a wonderful trilogy. I consider this to be damn near the perfect trilogy. Would I say it's a 10 out of 10? I'm kind of leaning towards more saying this is a 10 out of 10 trilogy because of the enjoyment that I get from watching these. Um, I'm going to say that for me, this is the perfect trilogy. Back to the Future. So I agree with this being at the number three spot. I might rank it number three myself or higher because it's it's the perfect trilogy, in my opinion. Loved it. Their number four pick is a trilogy. I'm not sure if I would rank this high. This wouldn't even be honest with you. Probably wouldn't make my list. Again, just because it wouldn't make my list of the greatest trilogies don't mean it's not a good trilogy. And I do like these movies. I'm not going to say I love these movies. I do like them. And I found a lot of enjoyment in watching it, especially with the kids when they was younger. But um, it's Toy Story, the Toy Story trilogy. Great movies. Great, great movies. Don't get me wrong. But being number four on the greatest trilogies list of all times, I don't know. I'm not, you know, again, I'm not going to say any of these picks are wrong because they're not. They're really great trilogies. I'm, I would just do it a little bit differently with my ordering. So, yeah. The Toy Story trilogy. This story, uh, ran from '95 to 2010, so this is a 15-year trilogy. Actually, longer than that if you want to count. Well, the trilogy, yeah, but we know there's four movies. So yeah, there we go. The Toy Story trilogy. Number five. Um. Again, this being in the top five, I'm not going to argue. If this wasn't in the top five, I would have argued it. But since it's in that top five, it's five, but still it's in the top five. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to bitch and moan. And this goes from 72 to 1990. So we're looking at 18, year, 18 years in the making. And we have the Godfather trilogy. This is the Coppola restoration. This is, a, this is, this is almost a perfect trilogy. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's below as far as the overall quality of the whole trilogy. When you take a trilogy into account, you have to take into account all three films to give it that perfect or almost perfect designation. And part three was good. I like part three, but there was parts of three that kind of sank the ship a little bit. Three was an overall good movie, but there was some things in three that I didn't really care too much for. Again, didn't make three a bad movie at all. But when I take the trilogy into account as a whole, it's not a perfect trilogy. It's a damn good one. And it's close. It is close. I mean, it's top. It definitely belongs in the top five of greatest trilogies. Top three, if depending on what day you catch me on, it's really good. It's not quite perfect though. It's really, really good though. So yeah. Now again, looking at the list so far, Toy Story being ahead of the Godfather trilogy, I'm not seeing that. That's what I'm saying. We we gonna talk about this because you got Toy Story at number you at number 4 and you got The Godfather at number 5. I'm not really understanding that. That's me though. So now we're going to go down to a trilogy, The Bourne trilogy. Again, no. For me, number 6, I'm not I'm not co-signing this. This was a decent action movie trilogy. It really was. It, Matt Damon did his thing and the and the supporting cast did their thing. These are really good movies. Uh The Bourne runs from 02 to 07. And there's actually more than three movies. But again, we're talking about the first three of the trilogy. And I wouldn't agree with it being at number six. It's a good trilogy. It's not, it's, to me personally, it's not even a great trilogy. It's a good trilogy. That's that. Here's one that, this one is a little high for me. I like it. I loved it. But I didn't like all the movies. So we're going to talk about, uh, from 1981 to 1989, the Indiana Jones trilogy. I mean, I liked, for the most part, all of these movies. I ain't going to take nothing from them. They are good movies. I enjoyed them. And it's a, it's a pretty consistent trilogy, but eh, I don't know. 
number number seven, I, I don't know if I would put this in my top 10. Again, that doesn't mean it is bad because it's not super high. Super high, certain movies need to be super high on a list like this. And again, the Indiana Jones trilogy is a banging trilogy, not taking nothing away from it. Next up, we have the dot. They call this the Dollars Trilogy. So, and it's number eight. And it's the Clint Eastwood. This is the Clint Eastwood collection. And the Dollars Trilogy is a fistful of dollars for a few dollars more and the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, I've heard that trilogy be called a couple of things. I never heard it called the Dollars Trilogy, but... That's what the article calls it, so we're going to call it that for the sake of the video. The Dollars Trilogy. So, yeah, it's a fantastic trilogy. What can I say? It really is. But this is a trilogy that most of you know, most of you know it by the Man With No Name Trilogy. So that's, you know, the Dollars Trilogy, but for the sake of the article, that's what we're going to call it. It's a good trilogy. I wouldn't rank it that high, and I love Westerns, but again, I agree that it deserves to be on a list. Next up, we have at number nine, and the Dollars Trilogy ran from 64 to 66. It's only two years to make all, to make those three one, movies, and they're great movies. Now, I get it. It was back in the day, a lot less involved with making movies, so yeah. Next up at number nine, <clears throat> from 99 to 03, we have the Matrix Trilogy. We have the Matrix Trilogy. The Matrix, the first Matrix, is such an influential piece. The special effects used in that movie went on to be part of movie cinematic history for decades after this movie came out. It went, it became part of video game culture, part of movie culture. This movie, the first Matrix, was a science fiction action movie juggernaut. And I liked the second movie. The third movie left little to be desired. They left the ending of the entire trilogy. They left us hanging. They did not do a good job at wrapping this up. This is not a perfect trilogy. This is not even a good trilogy as a whole. So when, again, like I said before, when we're talking about trilogies, you have to look at all three movies as a whole to give the trilogy your blessings or a designation of perfect or almost perfect trilogy. This falls short because, again, I liked one and two and I liked and I did not like the third one. And most people who, that was the sore point, was the third one. Some people, I, I'm actually seeing a lot of people say they didn't like the second one. I loved the second one. I thought it was phenomenal. I thought it was just as good, just as good special effects wise as the first movie. But the third one, and if they didn't leave us hanging at the end, if this trilogy would have wrapped up a little bit better, this could have been... The perfect trilogy. They could have made this the perfect trilogy or damn near perfect. It doesn't even get that. This is just a good trilogy. It's not even a solid trilogy because the third movie left us hanging. Again, the first movie is a science fiction action movie juggernaut. And it, again, it went on to influence movies for decades after its release. You cannot deny the first movie. So let's see. Here's one that I don't have at there. Number 10 is the Evil Dead Trilogy. I don't have it, so we're going to move on. I don't have the number 11. It's called the Three Colors Trilogy. I don't have that, so we're going to move on. We do have number 12, and it is the Alien Trilogy from 79 to 92. I loved one. I loved two. Three was just okay. So again, this is one that cannot get the perfect or almost perfect designation from me. It might get it from you. One and two was banging. I liked two the best because now the first one was more of a horror piece. The second one was more of a uh, of an action horror piece. So I liked both of those the way they kind of the way they kind of worked out. But the third one, ah, uh, I really wasn't. I'm not gonna say it's terrible, but again, it dragged the trilogy down. If any movie is weak in a trilogy, it drags the quality of the entire trilogy down. You understand what I'm saying? But yeah, the Alien trilogy is a good trilogy. It's, yeah, it's a good trilogy. It falls in the category of good trilogy only because the third movie pulled it down, in my opinion. The first movie was banging. The second movie was absolutely banging, in my opinion. I like that one the best. And the third one, uh, I don't know. It, again, it was the third movie was not bad. It just didn't have the quality of the first two, in my opinion. So that's The Matrix. That's their number nine pick. Their number 
No, I'm sorry. The Matrix was number nine. That was their number 12 pick. Number 13 is a trilogy uh, that I liked. It's, it's five movies total in this series. And with Aliens, I do believe, in this original Aliens type of deal, I think it is just the first three. And everything else just kind of spawns off and do other things with, you know, the Aliens and the... Uh, the Predators and all that stuff start coming together. It just got kind of watered down from there. Um, Prometheus and all that craziness. But here's one. The Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy, although there's five, movie, five movies in the set total. We're talking about the first three. I enjoyed them. I thought they was fun movies. I thought they was great watches, good family watches. Um, nothing bad to say about the Pirates of the Caribbean. They're not perfect. It's a, What this is, this is a really good good trilogy. It's not almost perfect or anything like that. It's a good trilogy. These are consistent films. These are great films that anybody can watch and get a lot of enjoyment out of. The Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy ran from 03 to 07, and these movies are enjoyable. I'm trying to tell you, they are enjoyable. I, It being number 13, I don't really have a problem with it being there on this list, list either. That's a Good number for that movie. It don't really need to be too much higher than that for that trilogy. Again, it's a good, consistent trilogy. And some people might like it more than 13, but for me, it's about right where it should be. Next up, we have... I don't know why I pulled this one down. Oh, I think I pulled the wrong one down, but that's cool. All right. Next up, we have at number 14, the Die Hard trilogy. There's no way in hell, I, me personally, I would put Die Hard all the way down at 14. One, two... Die Hard with a Vengeance. Again, Die Hard, banger. Die Hard 2 kind of, it was good, but it kind of went down a little bit, just a little bit. It went down a notch, but 3 took it way up a notch. So yeah, Die Hard trilogy, the first three movies, Die Hard with a Vengeance brought this, brought this series back, and I don't know what the hell they did after that, but Die Hard series definitely needs to be, for me, this would definitely make my top 10. Most definitely. So I disagree with the order on this. And Die Hard Trilogy, I'm not going to say it's, it's, it doesn't get the perfect trilogy designation because, again, two went down a little. Not much. It didn't kill the series. It really didn't. But it gets, to, it for the first three films, I will say it gets the almost perfect designation. Not quite perfect, but really, really good. Really, really good. Almost perfect. Next up, we have the Star Wars prequels. Again, banging movies. I liked all three of these. I liked them. I, maybe I'm biased because these movies came out. The original movies came out when I was a kid. Like, I would think I was maybe, I don't want to give my age away, but I'm going to give my age away. I think I was four when the first one came out. So I really didn't know what that was hitting on. And I was, I didn't really grow up with the first ones. Now, I've seen them numerous times, and I enjoy them. I love them. You know, oh, my older brothers and sisters, you would watch them, and I would watch them with them. But the prequels, I was an adult when they came out. So I, they was my Star Wars movies, if you would. The, the original ones, they, they was great Star Wars movies, but they wasn't my Star Wars movies. They was my brothers and sisters and my, and my parents' Star Wars movies. The prequels, they were my Star Wars movies. You understand what I'm saying? So I do enjoy the prequels a little bit more. But again, I don't think I would put the... I don't... I mean, the Star Wars prequels at number 15, I would probably put them up just a little bit higher, maybe a couple of notches higher, because I really enjoyed the third one because I love that... That, that full-on origin for Darth Vader because Darth Vader, his character was just surrounded in so much mystery throughout the first three films. Let's see. We got number 16 from 02. So Star Wars prequels was 99 to 05. And it was crazy because The Phantom Menace, which is the first one of the prequels, came out the same year as The Matrix. So that was crazy. And that movie didn't really do all that great. I think it made money, sure. But the critics and everybody, they panned it. I'm not sure what they was looking at. I enjoyed it. I'm not saying it's the greatest Star Wars movie. Because again, like I just said, I prefer the third one. But I thought it was a good movie. I don't think it deserved all the hate that it got. And I get it. A lot of people didn't like the fact they spent so much time on the racing. But it was a part of the movie. I didn't have a problem with it. But it came out around the same time as The Matrix. So... That was, that was a tough act to follow, even for Star Wars. The Matrix, the original Matrix, that was a tough, that was a tough shoe to fill right there. I'm trying to tell you. Big shoe to fill. So next at 16 from 02 to 07. 
we have the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. And again, me personally, I liked all three of them. I know a lot of people didn't like the third one. I liked the third one. Uh, I, I love this trilogy. It, it is a fantastic trilogy. Um, these movies are, these blows the Tom Holland movies out of the water, in my opinion. Tobey Maguire is the better Spider-Man. Tom Holland was just okay, in my opinion. I'm not going to take nothing from him or his movies. They're good movies, too. But these are the best Spider-Man movies. And to me, this is a almost perfect trilogy. Almost. Not quite. Only out of these so far, I'm only really giving so far the perfect designation. I'm only really giving that to the Back to the Future. And that, like, Lord of the Rings might be perfect. I got to see how this go at the end, but... The Lord of the Rings is a very consistent trilogy. You got to admit that. All three movies are really consistent. This one, it's almost perfect. It's not quite there. There's a few things in here that I didn't really care too much for. But overall, the quality of all three of these movies, in my opinion, was excellent. The Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. I agree. This is a great trilogy. And far as it being number 16, I would even probably put this one a couple of notches higher. Probably. Depending on how big the list was. So again, I agree with that being on the list for sure. Here's another one. Let's see. Number 17. They have from 1996 to 2000, we have the Scream Trilogy. I enjoyed all three of these. Scream 4 is where they lost me. The fourth movie is where they lost me. But they kept me with all three of these. These are good movies. I enjoyed them. Definitely not perfect or damn near perfect. These are just good. This is a good trilogy. There's a couple of things here that bring it down for me a couple of notches. But overall, this is an excellent trilogy. This is not a bad trilogy at all. Really good. All three of these movies, the first three movies are very consistent. They're good. There's a few things in them. But again, Scream 4 is where they, where they lost a lot of people was with Scream 4. I think everybody who liked the Scream series will say the first three are the best ones. Next up, they have, let's see, The Vengeance Trilogy. I don't have that. Next, that was 18. Number 19, from 1988 to 1984, we have The Naked Gun Trilogy. I like The Naked Gun. I thought they were funny, you know, you know, uh, comical, like Police Academy. I put them, they're not really nothing special for me. I got them. They're fun to watch. Again, I love them. Just like Police Academy, thought they was funny. Very interesting movies. Funny, you know. But I'm not a super comedy guy. But there is some enjoyment with these uh, Naked Gun movies. I just wouldn't, it wouldn't make my list at all. But they're on this list at um, number 19. So it is what it is. The Naked Gun trilogy is fine. I don't have a problem with it. It's fine. It just doesn't hit on my radar. Next up at number 20 from 2000 to 2006. That is the X-Men trilogy. Now, again, this is a solid trilogy right here. It's, it's, no, I got to take that back. It's not a solid trilogy because the third movie killed it. Again, the first two movies, I didn't have a problem with it. I loved the first one. I dug the second one. But the third one, I just don't know. So I can't give this a high designation for trilogies. And far as best trilogies, I don't think this would even make my list. Depending on, again, I'm, I won't say that. Depending on how long the list was, it could, but I, I doubt it. The third movie, Last Stand, I wasn't really feeling that one all like that. So the X-Men trilogy, the original three X-Men films, not bad films. The third one, not even that's a bad film. It's just an okay film. The X-Men trilogy. Next up at 21. Guys, now this list is out to lunch here. This list is out to lunch. You know that so far we're at 21. And what trilogy did we not touch on yet? But it's all that, the movie that we're all thinking is all the way to hell down at 21. The Terminator trilogy. Are you fucking, really? Really? This is all the way down at 21, but the fucking naked gun. Okay, all right, let's, 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 let's get back to it. The Terminator Trilogy from 1985 to 2003. Terminator 1, Terminator 2 are just, <laughs> man, they, they, are, they are cinematic masterpieces. 
straight up and down. And I like three. I know a lot of people didn't like three, but I like three. I like the story of three. I wish they would have stopped at three because it did a great job at tying up the story. It showed us everything we really needed to know about how this thing ended. And it did a good job at doing it. It really did. Now, I know a lot of people didn't care too much that Edward Furlong did not come back as John Connor, but he had a lot of issues in his life. At that point, he was strung out on drugs. He had legal issues. He had a lot of stuff going on in his personal life. He could not return, but he couldn't stop the movie from going on. I forget the kids, in the, well, the man's name who played the role of John Connor, but he did an all right job. He wasn't Edward Furlong, but he, he did an all right job. So I'm not even going to, you know, get mad at that. Terminator 3, I thought was a good, good film. I thought that the, the lady who played um, the rival in that one, what was she? The um, the TX, no, not the TX was in, no, I'm trying to think here. She might have been the TX. It was so many damn models. I know the Rev 9 was in Dark Fate. Whatever she was, she did a great job. She was very menacing. She did a good job with rumbling Arnie in that bathroom. That bathroom fight scene with her and Arnie was incredible. She had that, she had a straight face throughout the whole movie. She looked very menacing. I think she did a great job. And from what I understand, she only did, that was her only movie in her first movie. She did a good job. I would have loved to see more of her. So yeah, the Terminator trilogy for me, it's, <clears throat> it's damn near perfect damn near perfect. It, in fact, this is a perfect trilogy for me. And I know a lot of you guys are going to say, boo, because of three. But if you take three and pair it up to the rest of the movies, three did what it was supposed to do. It tied up the, the, the trilogy. It tied everything together. And we was left with an ending that I felt satisfied with. I was, I was, I felt very satisfied with the end of that movie. And I said, okay, wow. So that's how it all, that's how, you know, it all ended, and then, again, how it all began with that call on that, like, radio, where the people was, you know, talking about the resistance or whatever. It, I was like, wow, so that was the birth of the resistance. So I was very satisfied with part three. I know a lot of people wasn't, but I was. So, yeah, I'm going to give Terminator 1, 2, and 3 the perfect trilogy designation along with Back to the Future and Lord of the Rings. I'm going to say the Lord of the Rings is a perfect trilogy because of how consistent those movies were. Um, so let's see. Number 22 is the Internal Affairs trilogy. I don't have it. I just got one movie in that. And a couple of these, I got one movie in them, but I don't have the whole trilogy. Uh, next up is the Mad Max trilogy. The Mad Max trilogy, that's going to be number 23 on their list from, oh, I didn't put the years down for Mad Max. Anyway, from the 70s to the 80s, I do believe. From somewhere in the 70s, the late 70s to somewhere in the like the early to mid 80s, we'll say. So we have Mad Max with Mel Gibson, of course. Mel Gibson. Mad Max, the original Mad Max, banging the movie. And then we have Mad, uh, The Road Warrior, which is the second movie, which some people actually like better than the first one, but I like it equally. And Mad Max with Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. This is a good movie too. Mad Max, the Mad Max trilogy is a really good trilogy. It's a really, really good trilogy for me. I'm not going to call it almost perfect or perfect, but it is really good. And it's a very consistent trilogy. Next up, they have at number 24 from 97 to 02, they have the Austin Powers trilogy. I'm not going to argue with Austin Powers being on a list of greatest trilogies. As long as it's low enough, and this is about where I would probably put it on a list, uh, 25, maybe 30, something like that. It's good, but it's, it doesn't break any ground for me. I love the first one. I love the second one, and I actually liked Goldmember. I thought Goldmember was pretty good. Beyonce's acting drugged that third movie down a little bit for me, and I'm not a, a Beyonce basher. I like, I like Beyonce. I think her music is decent enough. I'm not one of those people who hate her music. I don't. It doesn't appeal to me. But um, I just think her acting drugged the third movie down just a little bit. Um, I did like Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery, and The Spy Who Shagged Me was an absolute banger. So yeah, Austin Powers trilogy is a good trilogy. Very entertaining, very funny. Number 25 I do not have is the Mighty Ducks trilogy. And I do believe Mad Max, that was, okay, that was 79 to 85, I do believe. 
Next up at number 26. And that, you know what? I'm I'm going I'm to disagree with this strongly because although the third movie was absolute dog shit, the first two was banging and the first two they carried the trilogy not enough to give it not enough to give it perfect or even almost perfect. It's not enough because the third movie is just that bad. It's it it really hurt the ranking to where it's a good trilogy, but the third movie again is just so bad. And it's at number 26. I wouldn't put it that low. It's that's really low. Number 26 on a list of 33. It, it deserves better than that. And we're talking from 1998 to 04, the Blade trilogy. There's no way this movie, this trilogy is that low. On a list of 33 to have this at 26, no way. I disagree. Blade 1, Deacon Frost. Oh, the story was amazing. Number two, story amazing. Action. It had it all. Action, a little bit of comedy, the little rivalry between Blade and Ron Perlman's character. Banging movie. Um, just the, the bad guy in this one. Uh, it, it was a good movie. Blade 1 and 2 are phenomenal. Trilogy, uh, Trinity, I, I, again, I'm, I'm not sure what was up with that. It really hurt the trilogy. Had Trinity, had Trinity been just as good as 2 or right below 2, this would have been an almost perfect trilogy. But Blade Trinity just jacked the whole series up. So this is a good trilogy. Next up is the Millennium Trilogy. They call this the Millennium Trilogy. And it ran from 09 to 2010. I think the years on that is wrong, but that's what they had in the article. I think that could be a little bit off, but it could be. Maybe they did all these in from 09 to 10. Who knows? Who knows what the shooting schedule was like? But it is the Millennium Trilogy, and it consists of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, banging movie. It consisted of the girl who played with fire, another banger. And the girl who kicks the hornet nest, another banger. And it's another one. That, uh, well, again, we're talking about the first three. The fourth movie, I think the girl played with the spider's web, played in the spider's web. I got it over here. That was a good one. I mean, that was a good one. So, yeah, all three of these movies are just so good. They're consistent. This is pretty much, and, you know, I know some of you may not agree with it, but these three movies are so consistently good. This is a perfect trilogy because of the consistency and the quality of the movies. The story, the action, the acting, really good. The, these movies are, and they they work. So I'm going to put this at, I'm going to put it at almost perfect. It's not quite perfect, but these movies are consistently good. And especially the fourth one. The fourth one in the series is really good too. So it's, it's almost perfect. Not quite. Almost. And next up at number 29... Number 29, I, I, I just don't know, guys. Again, this isn't my list. We're sharing... Um, where did this article came from? I know Empire. This is from Empire Magazine. We're just talking about their list. At number... Okay, at number 28, we got the El Mariachi trilo uh, trilogy. I don't have all of them. That's Desperado. Uh, I don't even have all three of them. I know one... The, the last two, I think you can get those in a double pack, but I have Desperado. So that's the El Mariachi trilogy, and I don't have it, so we're going to skip one to the next one. And we have at number 29, the Trilogy of the Dead from 68 to 1984. And that consists of uh, George C. Romero's Night of the Living Dead, classic. Dawn of the Dead, I love this, but I also love the remake to this. The remake to this was incredible. And then we also have The Day of the Dead. All three of these are really good movies, and these being down at number 29 on a list of 33 is these are this is a good trilogy this is a good trilogy it's a good trilogy next up we have at number 30 from 1996 to 2006 the mission impossible trilogy i liked one and three the most. Two was all right. I ain't going to take none from two, but I prefer one and three. Philip Seymour Hoffman did a really good job in this movie. Uh, R.I.P. going way too soon. Legendary actor. I liked these Mission Impossible movies. I liked all three, but if you say which ones are your favorites, I'm going to go with one and three. But they all are banging. I love the um, the Mission Impossible 
trilogy. I like all the Mission Impossible movies for the most part. I like them all. Some more than others, but I don't dislike any of them. It's a solid franchise. It consistently delivers. And it's just a banging franchise. And to have this down at number 30 on the list of 33, I just don't freaking understand. To put this trilogy, these three movies, below, like, I, I again, not my list. And then at number 32, we have the Hannibal Lecter trilogy. There's more movies in the series. There's five total, I do believe. I got all five, but we're talking about for the, for the sake of the video, we're talking about their trilogy, the ones that they pick. And which makes sense because these are the ones that are connected. Um, Silence of the Lambs, and this trilogy ran from 91 to 02. So we have Silence of the Lambs, classic banger. Hannibal, love it. Love it. Absolutely love this movie. And then we have Red Dragon. Love this one. So this is... These three together are absolutely consistently good, great storytelling, phenomenal acting. This is a perfect trilogy. This is this is a perfect trilogy, in my opinion. And the next up is the Jersey Trilogy. I think that movie consisted of movies like Clerks, Mall Rat, and Finding Amy. I think those were the three movies that was in that trilogy. And that ran from like 94 to 97, but I don't have that. So out of all of the trilogies that they listed, I have the majority of them. I agree with most of them being on the list. Not in the order that they got them in. But yeah, I think the article was pretty good. I'm, again, you guys can go ahead and click on the link and you can look at it for yourselves. Tell me in the comment section what you think about uh, their ranking. Uh, what movies, I mean, what trilogy you would have liked to see on that one. Um, I agree with most of these. There's a couple of that I probably wouldn't have put on. And I would have put something else on. Like, I'm looking back behind me. And far as like trilogies go, um, there's not excluding superhero stuff because I, you know, I really don't like to include a lot of those on list. But there's a couple of trilogies. I keep all my trilogies on this first rack here. That's why I keep all my trilogies. But I, I can agree with most of those because I'm looking at my trilogies up there, and um, yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with that, with, with it so far. Yeah, I agree with most of them. Um, I would I would have probably put the It Man, the first three It, Man's, it Man movies in there. And I probably would have did, me personally, I probably would have put Rush Hour on there. All three of those was pretty good in my opinion. They was pretty good. They wasn't, again, they wasn't groundbreaking, but Rush Hour was pretty good. Bad Boys, I, I would have put Bad Boys on there too. Um, looking... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's a solid list of trilogies. It really is. And I'm looking at my DVD trilogies that's over here, and um, just looking to see what I could have put over there. I got a lot of um, me personally because of when I grew up. I would have put the house party, the house party trilogy on there, on this list. Um. Yeah. Guys, tell me what you think in the comment section.